So hello guys, and welcome to another episode of Question Block. And the last question was, what are some features that you would like to see in the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remake? So this remake is really exciting, definitely one of my favorite game announcements of all time from the Nintendo Direct and everything. So I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope that they add some new features on top of kind of upgrading the art style and I guess um, some quality of life upgrades. I'd like to see some new things in this remake. So I'm going to go ahead and read the responses here. So SVXT said, I would love to see more partners from Paper Mario 64 making a return after completing the game. Just like Bo and her butler Bootler. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool to see like more characters from that game, especially the partners returning. Since they did have the picture from Super Paper Mario showing the Paper Mario 64 partners at uh, Mario and Luigi's house. So there is a possibility that they could be expanding more on the continuity. So I do think there actually is a good chance that they'll have more Paper Mario 64 partners. I think that would be really cool if like all of them or like NPCs after completing the game. I think that would be like a really cool reference and it would definitely kind of tie the game in more with Paper Mario 64. Like the game already seems to be doing that with like the Paper Mario 64 theme um, seemingly being present in the game since it was in the trailer. So I think it would be cool if they kind of expanded upon that continuity. So John Martin Reviews said, I would like to see more Trouble Center quests Maybe after you finish the main game, more troubles appear. Maybe a more challenging and interesting thing they could do is have each of your partners have a um, trouble, so that way there's more story with each of them. And it, it expands upon their character development. Yeah, that would be really interesting if they kind of had side quests related to each of the characters. That would almost be similar to how Xenoblade 3 handled like certain side quests because there was a side story kind of basically like an extended side quest for each of the characters in that game so i think it would be cool if thousand year door did something similar but obviously on a smaller scale um just in general i think it would be nice if they improved the trouble center and like actually made it so where you can like accept multiple side quests at a time and also had like a menu for side quests as well, so you can like track your progress and different things. And they should improve the rewards for some of them, since some of the rewards for the ones in the original game were just really weird and made you go out of your way for barely anything. So I hope they improve the side quests in the Trouble Center. And I like your idea with the side quest related to each of the partners. So, Ranpan said, I would love to have a fast travel system implemented. A boss rush mode would also be a welcomed addition, getting to fight the chapter bosses and maybe take some cues from the Kirby team and make their own version of EX and Soul bosses. Imagine facing the Shadow Queen with double the HP, her attacks are twice as strong, and her defense is doubled. Yeah, that would be really cool. That would almost be similar to how they're handling it in the Super Mario RPG remake, since in that remake they're also doing like a boss rematch mode, um, rematch mode, and the bosses are stronger and like everything and seemingly have more health as well. So it would kind of be similar to that, um, is probably that's probably what they're gonna do. But it would also be really cool if they did, um, they took some cues from, um, Kirby as well and kind of change the design of each of the bosses, at least, like, color-wise. Maybe did, like, a palette swap for some of the bosses for some of, like, the stronger variants of them in the rematch. It would, al it would also be similar to Origami King as well, since that also had a boss rematch mode. Though in that game, it was more of a thing where you have to kind of complete it within a certain time. But it would be cool if they kind of had both options with just um, both defeating the boss um, normally, like in a rematch, or doing like a, basically a harder version of that boss. I think it would be cool if there were like both of those options available. And a fast travel system would also be nice as well, since that would definitely help with like the backtracking that's in the game, since like chapter four, chapter seven has some backtracking. So it would be nice if there were like 
almost like pipes like Origami King had, or you could kind of basically fast travel using the magical map to certain locations, like maybe certain save blocks or certain like places will allow you to like um, travel between them. Maybe they'll imp implement like a brand new thing where you can travel between certain points. That would be really nice to see in this remake if they added something like that. And I really think they will do something like that since backtracking does seem like um, a little bit of a thing that I'm kind of critical of with this game, even though it is one of my favorite games of all time. I feel like that is one of the only things holding it back. So I do think it would be nice if they kind of fixed some of that in some sections of the game. But yeah, or at the very least, make more things in the overworld um, that you can interact with. So it makes at least makes backtracking a little more interesting. So Enclosed Granddad said, I want to see Spin Dash from Paper Mario 64 to return, as well as the Speedy Spin Badge. It's such a convenient and fast way to get around. Yeah, that's another thing that will help, like, traversal around, like, the worlds in Thousand Year Door. I think that would be a great feature to see, like, with the Spin Dash, since I use the Spin Dash quite a lot in Paper Mario 64, and it would just be great to see that return. It's, um, definitely a pretty underrated feature in the Paper Mario series, and I'm kind of surprised that there really hasn't been, like, a Spin Dash returning at all. There technically was one time where it was supposed to return, which was in, um, Sticker Star. There was actually, like, a scrapped Spin Dash, um, similar to Paper Mario 64 because of some sound effects that were found. There might have been another instance where it was scrapped from one of the games, but I don't really remember, but it would be cool if they added that in the Thousand Year Door remake. I really, like, as well as the Speedy Spin Badge as well. So, Natural Nova said, at the end of the game, after the credits are over, I want a cutscene foreshadowing Super Paper Mario, like how Sonic 2 remake had a cutscene foreshadowing Sonic 3. Yeah, that would definitely be pretty cool, and it would definitely be kind of adding on to the concept of this remake adding to the continuity of the Paper Mario series with Mario, like, Mario's house um, looking closer to how it did in 64, and then also the photo of the partners that was in Super Paper Mario. I think it would definitely kind of add to the continuity if they did just a subtle hint of, like, Super Paper Mario. They don't have to go crazy with it, but just something like very small, just very subtle, or something like that, um, that would be really cool. But yeah, so UV Hunters said, some new Switch exclusive badges would be nice. Yeah, I think it would be great if, um, they added some new badges in this game. Um, I think, like, maybe some badges kind of based on some of the, like, different hammers and boots from the modern Paper Mario games. Like, there's, like, that one with the, um, I know one of them from Color Splash was, like, the KO Hammer, and then Sticker Star, the Ba Hammer, um, there's, like, the Slap Hammer, Eek Hammer, um, different things like that. It would be cool to see some of those as badges, but kind of fixed to where their, um, the moveset is kind of kind of fits more within the context of Thousand Year Door. It would be cool to see, like, more of that. Um, even, I think there's even some from Origami King that would work. Then maybe some items as well from, like, the newer Paper Mario games. Like, things like, um, the leaf, or not, not necessarily the leaf, but, like, the Tanuki Tail. That's more of, like, the item that that's kind of implemented in modern Paper Mario. Um, maybe the Ice Flower, but the Ice Flower works more similarly to how the Fire Flower works in Thousand Year Door. That would be really cool. Um, it would be cool to see, like, some more, like, badges and items and everything. And then maybe even more badges for the partners as well. I think that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, I think it would definitely be nice to see, like, the badges kind of be improved and kind of um, have more badges in the remake. So Jade and the Red Fox said, a way to skip through the text faster. I replay Thousand Year Door very often to do challenge runs and constantly mashing through abundant amounts of dialogue in the game really puts a strain on my hands. 
Yeah, I kind of agree with that, especially with that one part where you have to kind of skip through the text a hundred times. Um, I think that's... I think that's in Chapter 5, um, or at least in the um, Kill Hall Key area, where there's, like, the Piantas talking, and um, one of them is like, um, like, say that I, um, you love me a hundred times, and then you have to go through that. Um, it would be... I'm, I know that gag was kind of funny, but it it would be nice if you could actually, like, skip through the text faster, especially in parts where you kind of already know what they're saying. I mean, maybe the first time through this remake, even if you've already played Thousand Year Door, you, you'd want to see what things were changed and what they've added in terms of dialogue. But if you're, like, replaying the game and kind of know what some of the characters are saying already, it would be nice to kind of skip through that dialogue faster. But yeah... So, M64 Bros said, custom badges so you can customize Paper Mario's color on his overalls and his shirt, just like what you did in the original game with Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi. Yeah, that would be really cool um, if you could actually, like, customize your um, style and everything with, like, certain badges. Like, if they had, like, a custom badge, like what you were saying, I think that's a really cool idea. And there's definitely a lot of potential involved with that. If not, it would be cool to see more emblems, like the um, L and W emblems. It would be cool to see more of those, so you could have, like, more colors. Like, maybe you could have one... Like, since Mario's color doesn't change when you're using items like it does in the modern Paper Mario games, maybe they could have, like, an emblem that has, like, Fire Mario or Ice Mario, um, different things like that. Maybe even um, Bubble Mario, like, from Mario Wonder. That would be really cool, and, like, at the very least, I think they should have something like that where you can kind of change between different colors. But yeah. So, Jack Attack Gaming said, Isn't it obvious, Alex? A Luigi postgame about his adventures in the Wobble Kingdom, you rarely see him throughout Mario's adventure. I definitely agree. I know some people are saying that the whole point of Luigi's story is that it's like a joke that doesn't really exist. But honestly, if they kind of adapt it to where, like, Luigi's kind of point still is relevant in the game and doesn't really change much, um, but they make Luigi's adventure, um, like, let's say they make it a lot different from how Luigi's actually describing it, or they make it kind of look like a di like, they make it in a way to where it's portrayed slightly differently from how Luigi's describing it, um, just to kind of add to that um, comedic value of Luigi's story and everything, but maybe Luigi is leaving out certain details that he doesn't want to tell Mario. It would be cool if they did something like that. And there's definitely a lot of potential with, like, the, um, partners that they have, um, in the, like, with Luigi's partners that, like, were with him during that adventure. Like, there was the one that's based on the scrapped enemy, and then there's, like, the cherry bob um, called Jerry, um, I think it's pretty cool. I think there's definitely a lot of potential with those partners. But yeah, I'd love to see, like, a Luigi in the Marvelous Compass side story. Almost like how Bowser's Fury was, or, like, Bowser's Minions in the um, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga remake, or Bowser Jr.'s Journey. Um, something like that I think would be really cool, but hopefully they'd stick to the regular gameplay if they do something like that. I hope they don't go in the direction of the... Mario & Luigi remake side modes. So, Giyoshi said, I'd see a museum like the modern games, starting with Color Splash, including never-before-seen concept art for the game and the remake. Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, that was one of my predictions for the Super Mario RPG remake. I'm not sure if they're actually going to do that, uh, but it would be cool, and probably more likely if this were going to be in the Thousand Year Door remake. And it would be great to see, like, the enemies shown off, like, all of, like, the tattle information and things. I mean, I guess you could already kind of... It would be almost similar to, like, the tattle log, but it would be a more um, detailed version of it. Almost like how, um, like, the monster log that they're doing in the Mario RPG remake. I think it would be cool if there was, like, a more extended version of that. And then also, like, a showcase of, like, all the badges and items... Um, all of the music and, like, a sound test. Um, and then, obviously, like, the concept art as well. I think that would be really cool. And there's definitely a lot of potential for it. Like, 
in the remake and everything. So they could maybe place it somewhere in Rogue Port. But yeah, I'd love to see that. So, Crumps Crumbs said, Marilyn getting confirmed as Ferb's cousin from Phineas and Ferb. I have no idea what you mean by that. Well, I mean, I guess... I guess you could re be referring to, um... Marilyn not talking that much. Because Ferb also doesn't talk that much. But who knows? Maybe they will confirm that Marilyn is Ferb's cousin from Phineas and Ferb. We'll just have to see. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. And the next question is, what is your favorite remake that has been released on the Switch so far? But yeah, make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.